Today we've got a new face-to-face -face with the developers, which includes some important information about how kingdoms can be managed. So stick around in this video for the things you need to know. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskel Gaming, and anytime there's Rise of Kingdoms news, you know your boy Cheese over here likes to try to cover it. So let's go and get a look at this face-to-face -face with the developers, which launched very recently. Question 1. Will the Lost Kingdom domain system become a permanent feature? Now for those of you who haven't seen this yet, in the end game, some kingdoms are so large because they have so many farm and alt accounts because those are so busted in KVK. The developers essentially went in and they said, all right, we're going to limit the number of accounts that enter into KVK for your kingdom. Uh, and so that number is currently somewhere between eight and 900. So you register all of the accounts from your kingdom that are going to play in KVK if your kingdom is too large. And what this system actually revealed is that the farm situation is far, far far more uh, important than I think even I had ever realized and emphasized, even though I said it was critical. In other words, farms and alts sending troops to die in KVK, that's the game, baby. You do that or you lose to that. Take your pick, which will it be? Um, even at the 900 max account limitation for what is re um, you sort of entering KVK for your kingdom, that, fill it with farms that actually send troops to die. So what do they say about it? Is this gonna stay? The Lost Kingdom domain system is currently in the pioneer phase. As we continue to collect player feedback and fine tune the system, we're well aware that any mechanical changes to the Lost Kingdom uh, can have a significant impact on the overall rock experience. Until we're satisfied that the system is fully tuned, it won't be formally added and will remain small scale pioneer. Now, I don't know that I would say that anything at a kingdom scale is exactly small scale ton of kingdoms have gone through this pioneer experience, including the biggest in the game. So at this point, it is effectively released, but it's a, released in a beta state is the way I would kind of describe this. And maybe, I mean, I don't know, not, maybe not all kingdoms are experiencing it. I thought, I thought the majority of kingdoms were seeing this thing. But there's a lot that I think needs addressing for this system. The first is when you have a domain well, okay, our last kingdom had like two other domains as well. So we had three total domains and the other two were just trash. They were like, nobody did literally anything at all in any of those KVKs for domain two, domain three. Like your players are split off into different KVKs. It just creates a really bad experience for anyone fighting against a domain two, domain three kingdom. It basically kills the war camp that they're in because like the game is balancing it as if there's going to be something there. There's nothing there, literally absolutely fully completely nothing the other thing that's a little bit weird is that when we did the domain system chadsky said if i ever have to register players for this system again i'm going to quit he would rather quit than continue to play no cap that's what he said the process of having to register 800 accounts sucks it does so uh, there's a lot that you could do with this i think Further reducing the number of accounts that a kingdom can bring would be a win to reduce the number of farms that most kingdoms are bringing. Pretty much the only kingdoms trying to bring more players are young kingdoms, perhaps, and also 1093. So like, let's rip off the band-aid here and actually get to really solid end game KVKs with the domain system, in my opinion. Um, all right, up next. Managing players is crucial for kingdom stability. So it'd be best if changes like the domain system didn't put additional burden on the kingdom managers. For Imperium kingdoms, domain regents have to both assign domain slots and manage their domain, which is a lot of extra burden. Yeah, so I already covered this a little bit where Chadsky literally said, I will quit rather than register a kingdom again. Seriously. Uh, and he said, the domain, uh, the developer said, the domain system does indeed place uh, added burden on the kingdom managers, a problem we're already considering at the start of development. We thought uh, about ways to address it, such as a system to assign domain slots automatically, but none of them quite satisfied all our governor's requirements. We've recently been conducting targeted surveys about domain management. Based on the results, we'll come up with a plan to address this issue as soon as possible. So the task of managing a kingdom, it is a shocking amount of work. And I have said for literally like three years now that the game ought to be baking in ways to make managing a kingdom easier. Um, and they have done some things that make managing a kingdom easier. Like, for example, the ability to exile a rogue is actually 
saving tens, if not hundreds of hours from kingdom leadership, which is a big deal. But more things like that, that reduce the burden is still, I think, would add a lot of value. The problem here is that once again, it's a farm issue. So, you know, you might say, oh, well, what if you had like a opt out system instead of an opt in? So today you register all the people, but what if you had to deregister the people that you didn't want to be in? Maybe that would make sense, except it, the, the issue is farms. Like the reason that registration is a very, very extremely arduous task um, is that you have too many accounts and you don't even know who most of them are, but you need them because they're farms. That's an alt. So that's like the, the issue here. You almost have to force your players to re rename all of their accounts to be like Chiskel 1, Chiskel 2, or even like Chiskel Alt 1, Chiskel Alt 2, Chiskel Alt 3, Chiskel Alt 4, um, in order to start to make that task easier. Like, dude, it's pretty nuts. Q3, we're a kingdom that wants to fight. But when we get matched with an Imperium Kingdom's second or third domain, we often find that they don't have an interest in fighting. This has really impacted our Lost Kingdom experience. Yeah, I feel like the second you look at a series of KVKs that get created as a result of the domain system, you realize immediately that those KVKs are going to be bad experiences uh, for the second and third domain. Like literally, immediately upon having an Imperium show you how it worked out, I feel, I feel almost like a way you could have done this without making your players go through it would have been if the developers like reached out to some kingdoms, had them do a mock registration, and then you could just see, and it's like, oh, so this will be the consequences. But a bunch of players are actively going through this experience in an ongoing basis of like, our KVK was ruined by domains that don't exist. Like, the war camps on the map exist for a reason, and when they're not filled with players doing things, it imbalances the map in a really meaningful way. I'll tell you a story about my very first KVK. My very first KVK, okay, when I was in Kingdom 51, I believe. Uh, yeah, it was 51 at the time. Wow, such a long time ago. In Kingdom 52 was OV, who uh, were opposed to us, and on our other side was Kingdom 50, and they, like, they, I mean, both those kingdoms, I think, benefited from hate migration against us before that was even a popular thing. It's like a whole long story there. I won't get into it now. Um, but you could migrate literally in the middle of KVK at the time. Anyways, the thing that made that KVK in part imbalanced besides bottomless migration mid KVK was the fact that just so we were surrounded by enemies, but one kingdom over was kingdom 49. And that kingdom was dead, like dead, dead, like full dead. And the reason that Kingdom 49 was full dead is because they had like a super racist, super hateful king um, who was spending just supreme amounts of money in the game. And that kingdom like couldn't even take their passes. They couldn't even take their holy sites. Like it was totally nuts. So our enemies were able to get basically free access to entire other zones, which imbalanced the KVK. And like, yeah, when you can move around other parts of the map freely, get massive amounts of buff, massive amounts of territory, you have nothing to risk by going and fighting because you can just have territory somewhere else. It completely imbalances the map. So I cannot overstate the significance of the imbalancing that takes place when second and third domains are here. And, and like, guys, there's no one in the second or third domain. That's the real, real weirdness of this. No kingdom is using second and third domains to, like, split off their team to try to create different forces. It's just alts and farms. The alts and farms don't need KVK. They don't. They straight don't. I think each kingdom does not need alt do domains. They just need a registration for their main group. And you just need to know, because farms are too OP, what is your main group anyways? Um, that's, that's the thing. Uh, can we reduce the number of Imperium Kingdoms to 12? The current requirement for becoming an Imperium Kingdom is too low. Every time we want to recruit new migrants, we need to cut our power by a lot. So the Imperium system, ayo. Here's the problem. The way the game is going, with the addition of new kingdoms all the time, and, you know, people join the game, but a new kingdom is created for those new people joining the game. Eventually, you get to this place where, yeah, people want to spread out across kingdoms to claim rewards, of course. But that means that... People are spreading out and spreading out and spreading out, which means kingdoms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And the way that Imperium works, it's bad for Imperium if all kingdoms are getting smaller because then the Imperium requirements also get more and more strict. You have less to operate with. So 
even the biggest kingdoms in the game are defined by the smallest kingdoms in the game and are getting smaller and smaller. Now, the only thing you can do about that today is to fill your hospitals, which is really silly to me. Like it makes absolutely no sense and never has that filling your hospital somehow, like the game looks at your active power, not your hospital power. Like somehow hospital power doesn't count as power. Um, so you fill your hospitals in order to get a migration in. So you fill your hospitals, drop out of Imperium very briefly because you do that during KVK with double hospital capacity. And maybe the game just wants you to spend resources on that mindless activity. I, I feel like that doesn't make any sense because you'd rather have players at all times spending the things that they've earned in ways that is rewarding, in my opinion. And I guess you could call a migration rewarding, but like that's not really how you're supposed to, like in the spirit of the game, spend resources and speed ups, but whatever. That's one way. Another way is people delete troops, which is also anti-player, like in the greatest way possible. Like deleting troops is the most anti-player thing in the world. And that is a thing that even I think 1960 did recently because they're like, yeah, we will never get a migration if we don't delete troops, um, which is bonkers, right? Um, and uh, anyways, there's ways to leave Imperium, okay? And you have to hack the system however you can, leave Imperium, get in who you can. Uh, and the only alternative to that is you get tickets, one per month, to bring somebody in. And the reason that you only get one per month is to limit the bigger Imperiums from getting even bigger. Like, the Imperium system is designed to shrink kingdoms. That That is what it does. That That is the, the way it works. You cannot get too big. Um, because, hey, if you're too big, how are you going to get a KVK match that's fun and fair? It sounds like what they're saying here is that they're adjusting the special immigration rules for Imperium Kingdoms in order to allow them to recruit more easily. In other words, <clears throat> increasing the recovery rate for special immigration quota, increasing the maximum number of special migrants you can accept, et cetera. So that seems okay, but it doesn't address the kingdom economy, like the economy of the kingdoms. And like the fact that, like, like it doesn't solve the problem per se. Like it, it, it attacks the symptom, which is like, hey, these big kingdoms uh they're dying too like legit dying because they just can't cycle in new players but it it like doesn't address the underlying cause for why that happens in the first place and and why a kingdom could get so big they just can never leave imperium so anyways i think it's a fine uh intermediary solution for sure and i think trying to solve the bigger problem is i mean unless you want to merge kingdoms i don't know man like what can you do uh, and i i almost think Merging kingdoms would be healthy for the game. Like, it's so opposite of what I would have said a long time ago, but here's the thing. Do you remember when kingdoms had, like, four alliances and were considered small at four alliances? Like, I don't know. It's just a very different game with one alliance kingdoms being the, the sort of standard now and, and the, the highest you can maintain in the end game. I, I don't know. Was the game more fun? You tell me when it was, you know, six alliances in a kingdom versus the way it is now. You've, you know, your one alliance kingdom is what it is. Uh, up next, the final rewards are unfair to governors and kingdoms that didn't perform well in the Lost Kingdom because of matchmaking issues. Uh, so this is really interesting. Let's see what the developers say. We've had a number of governors tell us that despite doing a lot in the Lost Kingdom, they didn't receive an Autark reward. Uh, yeah, even if you win, I've been in this spot. We won, okay? Our allies were the ones that got the main Autark reward. And despite being one of the top 20 contributors in the kingdom, like... It made sense to give those rewards to rally leads and garrison captains. I think I even encouraged that. Um, so I did not get an Autark in, in the first KVK in my restart uh, kingdom where like Autarks were possible. And there's, there's a lot of situations where like you can lose the KVK and you did astronomic things, but you still don't get an Autark. I really feel like Autark rewards and KVK rewards are such a weird thing. Like I completely understand that it makes sense for the KVK reward to be meaningful. But the the enemy of a meaningful KVK reward is the desire to then rig KVKs in your favor because uh, the reward is so strong, you you really need to get them so that you when you fight the strongest kingdoms in the game or kingdoms stronger than you, you have some kind of advantage. So it creates a weird anti-dynamic of like, I need the reward versus I want a good experience playing the KVK. And there's a bunch of ways to go and tackle that. Uh, it says they're having many internal discussions, currently coming up with a plan to fix it. Exact plan is TBD, but our goal is to give some governors who did not receive an Autark testimony the opportunity to redeem Autark rewards. For example, special inscription items. I think that's great. 
there are bigger forces at play, right? And when you solve for those dynamics and make sure that players that do a lot get rewarded, I mean, they will feel like they've had a rewarding experience probably. Um, so anyways, I think this is great that they're looking at it. I don't know what the answer is. It's not necessarily easy, but I, th but I think we've outlined the dynamics there. Number six, I'd like a feature that lets me share the layout or design of my city. This feature is currently in development. Cool. I don't care about that. I have not really done much with layout on my city. I totally get, however, there's some people that care about that. I'd like the ability to search for governors using their ID, including when searching leaderboards. This feature is currently in development. I mean, you go to settings, okay? You go to other, you go to search governor. You can enter a governor's name, but you can't have enter their ID. All right, so I guess they'll make an ID-based search. Uh, that sounds good. Okay, cool. ID-based search, but there is a search governor function for those of you that didn't know. All right, up next. By the way, I didn't know that for a very, very shocking long time that that was in there. Uh, I don't know when it was added, but I just had never used it for, for like, I mean, I've known about it for like, like at least a year at this point, but you get the idea. Um, could you add engineering equipment blueprints to the VIP store? I think that makes a ton of sense, even though I probably will never invest in engineering. Um, we will consider adding engineering blueprints to the VIP store, but our specific plan is TBD. I think, it, you know, if you want engineering to be played like all the other things, infantry, cavalry, archers, then you need to make the accessibility of that equipment equivalent to all the other things, right? So I think it's a fair ask. The new Champions of Olympia minimap is bad. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, it has all the troop dots crowded together, so it's impossible to glean information like flag ownership and troop combat. Can you change it back? In the recent update, we modified the minimap in hopes of improving the visuals. However, we also noticed there are some issues with the new minimap, such as a lack of clarity. We're currently working on ways to optimize the minimap. I haven't seen this exact problem because I don't really play Champions of Olympia, but I do kind of wonder, like, how does that get past testing, right? Like, <clears throat> I don't know, wouldn't that be the sort of thing that people who regularly play Olympia, if they had an early access peak, would identify immediately and then it could get fixed before it goes to production? Just a thought. It's unreasonable that Ark of Osiris requires a minimum of 15 people to register. Our kingdom is too small. See, this is, the, this is what I was saying earlier, man. Kingdoms are getting too small. It's difficult for us to participate in Ark of Osiris. Bro, I don't even know how to understand the level of casualness of a kingdom that can't muster 15 players. Like, just think about what we're saying right here, okay? We're saying a kingdom can't find 15 players. They cannot find 15 players that can agree to a time to play this game mode. Something is not right here. I, I don't, like, this is a symptom of a much bigger problem. I, I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't feel like kingdom merging is awesome, but I also feel like there is a problem here. Uh, kingdoms are getting too small. This is... The fact that this question even shows up, like, are there really that many kingdoms that can't muster 15 even? We're currently working on ways to address this problem, including new ways for smaller alliances to participate and allowing governors to solo queue as AOO participants. I don't know, man. I mean, I guess in, you know, World of Warcraft, right? They added a way that you could queue for dungeons and get paired with randoms and then you play it. So I like, I, on the one hand, I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. Like, I have played games where for convenience that feature was added, but it was added for convenience that you could search up a party and play with randoms, right? I mean, I guess if you think about it like Siroli, you can queue with randoms, right? Like Ian's Ballads, I queue with randoms for convenience. I want to play the game when I want to play the game. So I'm torn, right? I'm torn on the one hand to be like, dude, are we sure? Like, there are half a dozen signs in this 10-question, uh, you know, response uh, Q&A that point to kingdoms are getting too small. Are we going to address that kingdoms are getting too small? I mean, look, I'm on the outside of this problem. Like, I, I don't have the real data on the inside to, to say kingdoms are getting too small. But there's a number of things in here that are like... What, what is happening? But I like that the, the, the developers are thinking about all these things. These are good things to be thinking about. I actually do agree that in terms of Prio, like getting to the domain system right is a top priority for the game. I, 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 I fully believe that if KVKs are competitive and fun, the game has a great future. 
and the domain system right now, and really the prevalence of farms and alts interferes with that. And I would say you didn't realize how bad it was till the domain system came in. So it almost in some ways wasn't as bad of a problem before because you didn't know how bad of a problem it was really because you couldn't measure it. But now that we can measure it, it's like, bruh, <laughs> this is gone. Too, it's gone too far. Um, make five alts at least minimum. Um, and if you have like a dozen alts, your kingdom will love you forever. Seriously. Kingdoms actually um, are changing their rating scales. I mean, I don't know if the, do the developers know. The king, kingdoms are have built into their contribution systems how many troops did you kill on alts and farms? Because it's that valuable. Like, your main gets credit for alts and farm uh, dead troops. Seriously. Many kingdoms. Many. Go that route. Anyways. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. Um, if you're looking for a detailed breakdown, like where I go and, and kind of address, like, hey, what are, what are some of the things in this game in Rise of Kingdoms? And I also look at Call of Dragons and how would I rate them? Check the card in the end screen. My objective with that video was mostly to help people figure out which of these games they prefer based on the strengths and weaknesses of each game. But if you're interested in the kind of conversation we had here, you might actually enjoy that video and definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments of this one and also that one where I go and rate stuff. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.